Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss geeks or geeks problem of the day and today's problem is find kth smallest number in given n ranges and it is a medium level problem. So at the end of this video, if you feel that this video was helpful for you or if you were able to derive any value from this video, then don't forget to drop a like on this video and also do share your thoughts on this particular question in the comments or anything, any general thing you would like to share, you can uh, write it down in the comments. Because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to think that this video is actually good and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to solve new problems. So let us quickly start with the problem description. So this particular problem says that we have been given n ranges in the form of P and Q which denotes all the numbers in the range P, P plus 1 and up to Q. Right. So there will be all the numbers from the range P and Q both included. Now we have been given some queries. And in each query, we will be given an integer. So we have to, if the integer is k, we have to find the kth smallest element for each query. Right. So let me just uh, discuss these sample test cases and then it will be more clear to you. So here we have the first sample test case. Now they say that uh, the first range is from 1 to 4. So you will have 1. Let me just draw number line 2, 3. Four. So these are the first four elements of your uh, integer sequence. Now they have said the second range is 6 to 8. So 5 will not be in the range. The next element would be 6 and then you will have 7 and then you will have 8. Right. So the first query is 2. That means you have to find the second smallest number. So the second smallest number is this one. Right. So the answer for the first query is 2. Now you have to find the sixth smallest number. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the sixth smallest number is 7. Right. Now you have to find the tenth smallest number. But since no, there are only 7 numbers in this particular sequence, you cannot uh, print out the 10th smallest number. That is why you have to print minus 1. Right. So basically, uh, you will be given some ranges and you have to form a new sequence on the basis of those ranges. And you will have to find the kth smallest number in each one. Now the queries are not very huge. They, they are like 10 to the power 3 ranges and 500 queries. So you can answer all of them in n into q time. Right. So, uh, you can always uh, answer them in an interview time. So, for each of the queries, we can traverse the whole ranges array. But the question is, how do we actually solve it? And before this, uh, before the uh, solution discussion, I just wanted to share one more thing. That there can be some ranges like, for example, 1 to 5 and the second range is 3 to 7. Right. So, in that particular case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are given by or contributed by this particular range and this particular range will also contribute 3, 4, 5 right these three, these three numbers will also be contributed by this range and the rest of the numbers 6 and 7 will also be contributed right so the final number line would look something like this and you will have all the numbers from 1 to 7 right this is something that you need to take care of so how do we actually solve this question now a very uh, like basic idea would be to first sort the given ranges array according to the first element why only the first element? Because you don't want to miss any smaller point. For example, if we'll, let's say in other case, I sorted the whole ranges array according to the second element. And we have a case something like this. So let's say we have 9 and we have uh, let's say 20. But this was starting at 1. This was starting at 10. This was starting at 8. Right. So if you sort according to the second element, in this case, you will miss out some starting elements. Right. So the way we will be solving this question will be traversing the whole array linearly. Right. And in that in, in that particular implementation, if we sort it like this, we will we are going to miss out all the elements from 1 to 7. So it is always optimal to sort out the elements start uh, with respect to the first position. So that we don't miss out any starting elements. Right. So once we have cleared out that we want to sort the whole ranges array according to the starting element, now the problem becomes pretty straightforward and it's just an implementation problem. So how do you need to implement it? So what you can do is, for example, you want to go to position Q, right? So if you want to go to position Q, your current position, starting position will be this particular value. So if th this is 1 here, that is why the starting position is 1. Otherwise, let's say this is a range is array. At position 0, whichever element will be present, its 0th index, since they are stored in, uh, like, uh, what do you say, vectors of size 2, the 0th will be start denoting the starting position, right? So this will be essentially the starting position or the first element that are that is present in our number line right so this would be the smallest element so let's say if we are starting we are we are starting from this particular position this is our current element and our position will be one right so first we can figure out what is the maximum distance we can go for this particular range 
so you know that we can go up to 20 right so for example if a range is from 5 to 8 you can go three places right because the difference between them is three so you can go three places to the right so your position position value will at max increase by three for the current range now you know what is the maximum position you can increase you already know what position change you need currently because if you want to go to position q and your current position is post then this will this is the uh, difference that you actually need and you already know what is the maximum that you can go so you can take the minimum of it and you can traverse that particular distance for the current iteration now let's say there was some other other range right now if you have traversed this whole range completely and you have still not reached your position q now there might be two cases either the next starting value is smaller than this particular value let's say it is 18 right and it goes up to let's say 50 right it is going up to 50 if it is 18 that is it is smaller than the previous value then you don't have to do anything because you have uh, already come up to 20 and you have to find out what is the uh, like what is the remaining distance that you can travel from 20 to 50 right and that will be equal to 30 30 units right so this is the max distance you can travel but let's say let's say this was not 18 this was some of uh, some value 25 right so you see that this value is greater than the previous value now what you could have done is if it is greater then you know that if you still need to go some places to the right then you will uh, like move one place to the right and update your current directly by 25 so previously what we were doing is we were incrementing our position or our current current element by one right or we were incrementing it linearly but now we are just going to make a jump directly to 25 and we will increment our position by one let's say that this element was at position 20 right because you have a range from 1 to 10 now you will increase your position by 1 and the position will become 21 and the current element will directly become 25 right once we have made this changes the rest of the thing or the rest of the algorithm will be same as it was previously now you don't need to do anything extra right you would again calculate what is the maximum distance you can go you need to calculate what is the uh, distance that you actually need to go so the distance you want to go is equal to the current query and the current position right so this is the distance yet you need to go and you can always calculate what is the maximum distance you can go for the current range you have to take the minimum of it and travel that particular distance right so uh, this is how you can traverse the whole array and if you have not found an answer at the end if your position is not equal to the required position q the answer will be minus one because in that case we will never be able to reach that position otherwise the answer will be equal to the correct element right this particular element so let me just quickly summarize what we just discussed so what we have is we have some ranges and we discussed it is always optimal to sort the elements according to the first index right by the first index because we would not want to miss any smaller values right if we miss these values we will not be able to track it so we sorted all, all the all the ranges elements in the increasing order of their starting position now once we have sorted this we are going to maintain a couple of variables so the one of the variables will be current which will denote the current position right or the current element post will denote the current uh, index so for example the first index the second index or the third index meaning that this is this current element is the third smallest number fourth smallest number and so on right so position will be denoting the index of that element so we want this particular position to be equal to our current query q this is our goal right so we just first calculate for each of the ranges starting from zeroth range so we are starting from zeroth range and we move on forward we calculate for the current range what is the distance that I need to go so that, that, that will be equal to q minus post right my current position now I also need to calculate what is the distance that I actually can go for my current range and that will be equals to let's say range of range of i1 this, this is the ending position and minus current current is my current position so this is the maximum distance that I can go I have to take the minimum of it and I, can, I have to travel that particular distance now let's say we have completed this range after this, uh, this uh, these two things are executed that means uh, we have completed our current range so either position will be will become equal to q or it will be still less than q so if it is less than q then we will moving on forward with the next range now if the next range if this particular range ends at 20 and the next range begins at 18 and goes up to 50 now in this particular case since we have already covered 18 19 20 we don't need to do anything our current element or our current position will already be 20 right so we can uh, find the distance from 20 to 50 we can find the distance what we need currently right q minus post and we can take the value of it so no problem here we have to uh, do something extra only when the next element is greater than the previous element 
right in that particular case you will have to increment your position by one and and you will do this only when it is required right only when there is some need to increment the position that when is there a need to increment the position when our position is still less than q so if our position is less than q we will increment our position by one and update our current uh, element directly with this particular value right and then we again repeat what we have done till now we just find what is the distance that we need to travel we find what is the distance that we can travel for the current range take the minimum of it and move on forward so let me just show you the code for this particular problem now so uh, what i've done is i just sorted the range vector and uh, actually you don't actually need this what i've just simply done is i've just returned a is less than a of 0 is less than b of 0 so by default it is also going to do the same so just let me remove this part it is not required right so what I'm doing now is I'm creating an answer vector of size q. I'm just traversing through all the queries and I, I will initialize my current element with range of 0, 0 and my current position will be 1. Right? So this is the first element and this is my first position. Now I just traverse through the whole ranges array and for each of those elements I just find what is the distance that I need to travel and that will be equal to queries of p minus my current position. Now if I need to travel some distance and range of i0 is greater than current that is my current uh, my current starting range is pre greater than my uh, last ending range right so i will decrement my need my one i will increment my position and set my current directly as range of i0 now i will i will find a distance that i can go so i can go till range of i1 minus current so this is the maximum distance that i can go so change will store what is the dis minimum of both of these what is the uh, change i need to make so i will take the minimum of both of these and if both of them are negative i'll just take its max as with zero right so that is why I never go less than zero. So I'll increment my position by change and my I'll increment my current value by change. Right. So this is what I do. After I traverse the four uh, whole for loop, I after I traverse all the ranges, if my position is equal to my current query, then I'll uh, store current in my answer of p. Otherwise, I'll store minus one in my answer of p. So this would be the solution for today's problem of the day. And hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you are one of them, consider subscribing. Share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.